Today, we're gonna make a video that is entirely about this guy because he is a total badass and he's got a great story. Martin Miguel de Guemes. And when they make a monument that big and that impressive to you, uh, you obviously did something pretty cool. And he made all his men around him swear an oath that they would fight uh, until their deaths against the Spanish. Very, very noble. Welcome back everyone, Salta, Argentina. We are here in front of the statue of Don Martin Miguel de Güemes, right where we ended our last video. And today we're gonna make a video that is entirely about this guy because he is a total badass and he's got a great story. So if you're interested in that, well, come along. Thanks for clicking on the video. If you wanna help out the channel and help it grow, I really would appreciate it. Click on the like button down there, the subscribe button, and the little bell next to it to be notified for when new videos drop. It really helps the channel grow because it's gonna help the YouTube algorithm recognize this content and spread it to other YouTube viewers. If you'd like to support the channel monetarily, I would appreciate that as well. You can leave a super thanks by clicking this thanks button here and give a small donation to the channel. I appreciate your support. So back to the video, enjoy. So Guemes, like uh, most of the historical figures we talked about across our trip in South America was born uh, into like a noble aristocratic family. And honestly, when you, when you reach high ranks, the only people to ever reach really high ranks in the military were people who were born into it, uh, being a noble, noble family. But, he did some really, really amazing things uh, during his time in the military. Actually, his first uh, taste of battle was in Buenos Aires when the British invaded, uh, which we've talked about back in uh, like, uh, let's see, our video in San Isidro and some other videos before that when the British invaded in uh, 1806. He was uh, one of the people who was helping to defend Buenos Aires. So he had some military experience already going into the wars of independence that started, of course, May 25th, 1810 here in Argentina when Argentina declared independence from the Spanish. Now, he fought for the first like five years of the wars for independence sort of in different places all over, um, uh, all over the, the country. He fought up in uh, what, well, what is now Bolivia, he fought uh, down in Montevideo, in what is now Uruguay. And in 1815, he came here to Salta to, uh, to fight here. And this is uh, a few years after the Battle of Salta, which we remember from our previous video that we just made about the Battle of Salta, which happened in 1813. So two years later, Belgrano had left. He was off um, fighting down in Santa Fe. And other generals like Jose de San Martin were busy raising the uh, you know, army of the Andes and fighting in other places. So it sort of was left to, to Guemes, who was elected to be governor of the region here, governor of the province. It was up to him to sort of raise an army. He didn't really have enough money, enough capital to raise what would be like a typical army. And so he made do with what he had. And what he had around here were gauchos whom he armed and trained to fight in guerrilla tactics. So he was up here for like a couple of years fighting, fighting in, with guerrilla tactics, hit and runs. And uh, he became so infamous that Spanish generals here of the Royalist forces were writing letters back to the Viceroy of Peru talking about his army and how he was fighting this war that was constantly draining both their resources and their morale. So he was doing a hell of a job with just a very, very uh, meager force of a few thousand gauchos. We're gonna head over to uh, nearby here. There's a museum actually, a museum dedicated to uh, Martin Miguel de Güemes. We're gonna go check that out and we can talk a little bit more about, uh, about Güemes and some of his escapades during his long guerrilla war because he was fighting it here for several years and he he had to deal with a lot of uh, a lot of problems military problems logistics problems financial problems um, problems with the royalist forces to the north 
problems with other armies that formed internally. At one point, he was fighting a civil war on his southern front and a war with the royalists on his northern front. Like I said, this guy's a real badass. But let's head over towards the museum and we'll talk a little bit more about his, uh, his escapades. All right, so we're a few blocks away from the Museo de Guemes. We're here actually, again, in Plaza Belgrano. And now Belgrano, who was previously the commander of the Army of the North up here in uh, the northern part of Argentina, he had actually been replaced by uh, a gentleman named Jose Rondeau. Rondeau, Jose Rondeau. And um, Guemes actually fought under Jose Rondeau in the Army of the North in a campaign, what's known as the Third Campaign of Upper Peru. Basically, he took his gaucho army up there to fight north of Salta. And uh, Guemes was not impressed by Rondeau or by the condition of uh, Ron and the discipline of Rondeau's Army of the North. And he firmly believed that <clears throat> the Army of the North was going to be defeated. And so he basically took his troops and went back down to Salta because in the case that the army gets defeated in the north, he wanted to be in position in Salta to defend Salta from the advancing royalist forces who would inevitably be advancing south after defeating Rondeau. And lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. Rondeau's forces got defeated and um, the royalists ended up coming down south towards Salta. And Rondeau, who was furious, furious with Guemes, uh, who blamed him for his defeat, he actually headed down south and arrived in Salta before the Royalist troops, and he demanded that Rondeau's, uh, or that uh, Guemes' men, his gaucho army, uh, give up all their weapons so that he could rearm his army of the north. And uh, Guemes refused. And it became uh, a bit of a kerfuffle uh, so much so that Juan Martín de Pueyrredón, who we remember from our video back in San Ysidro, uh, link to that in the description, Juan Martín de Pueyrredón, who was the newly minted director, supreme director of the uh, United Provinces of Rio de la Plata, uh, that guy had to basically come all the way up to Salta to settle the dispute. And he eventually did settle the dispute, and the settlement was that Guemes gets to keep his army, he gets to keep his troops, he has to stay in command, but that he pledges that he will help uh, Rondeau's Army of the North. So after this, the people in, uh, in Salta take to the streets and they demand that uh, the council in Salta elect Guemes to be the new governor of Salta province. Now, the thing is, the council was uh, and, and like the the government here was controlled by wealthy landowners and Guemes had sort of made himself out to be the man of the people the people of um, of Salta really respected Guemes and he was eventually elected to be uh, the governor of Salta but this left a very bad taste in the mouths of all the uh, rich and wealthy landowners. After becoming governor of Salta, he continued to command his, uh, his gaucho army, fighting a guerrilla war in the northern front of Salta Valley against royalists that continued to attack. He was actually attacked six different times during his term as governor of Salta uh, by royalists from the north, and every time he was able to repel their attacks using his gaucho army. Uh, it was really Really incredible because he was very, very, um, it was an undermanned army. They were undersupplied and still was able to hold off those royalist forces. Now, one of the ways that he was able to get some capital, some money to resupply and pay his gaucho army was uh, he kind of extorted those wealthy landowners that I mentioned before into giving him a bunch of money and uh, using that to pay his gaucho army. Now, let me tell you, those wealthy landowners, uh, they, they did not take kindly to that action. And they basically began to hatch a plot with 
Um, the government in Tucuman, which was south of um, south of Salta, and also with the royalists, to basically that they would form an army and fight a civil war with Guemes on his southern front if, after Guemes was defeated, the royalists agreed that they would be able to keep all of their land holdings. So now, Guemes was fighting a war on two fronts, in the north against the royalists and in the south against this army uh, funded by these rich landholders in Salta who uh, wanted to see Guemes, uh, wanted to see his demise. So, like I said, He's kind of a badass dude, right? I mean, when he needed money to fund his guerrilla war of gaucho cowboys fighting against royalists who had held off multiple, multiple attacks, what does he do? He extorts a bunch of rich landowners for their money. Ooh, I love it. And uh, it makes him so mad that they decide to start an army against him. They collaborate with the enemy royalists uh, just as long as they get to keep their land. And he fights them too. I kind of love this guy. Anyway, let's go across. We'll check out Museo Guemes. And uh, after we do, we can talk a little bit more about the unfortunate final days of Guemes because uh, Guemes, he didn't uh, have an end like uh, Jose de San Martin or Martin de Pueyrredon. He, did, he didn't have a, uh, you know, I died of old age end. He died young and violently. But we'll talk more about that after we see the museum. All right, so we're in the museum. We're in the little uh, courtyard area here. It was 6,000 pesos uh, for foreign tourists to enter. I imagine it's cheaper for, um, for residents. I would imagine probably like 50% off, maybe like 3,000 or maybe even less, like 2,000 pesos, I'm not sure. Uh, but there is a guided tour. I asked if we could just sort of like do a self-guided tour because you guys know I always like to do those um, better, but uh, there is actually a guided tour that we have to follow and it starts in about 15 minutes. So we can just sit here in the courtyard and wait a little bit. And then once the tour starts up, we'll, uh, we'll see what's going on here in the Museo de Guemes. So the museum had a self-guided tour with interactive audio-visual exhibits that would trigger when you stood on these little dots on the floor. In this one, they're just going through like a history of the uh, the land and the area. Y un 16 de abril de 1582, al pie del Cerro San Bernardo, el licenciado Don Hernando de Berma fundaba Salta. And talking about up until the, um, the war for independence. El movimiento patriótico golpeó las puertas, instalando durante 11 años una cruenta y costosa contienda. La ciudad abandonó sus ocupaciones montanas para afrontar los desafíos y necesidades de una guerra. The next couple rooms were talking about the Guemes family, and interestingly, they had these two what looked like oil paintings of Guemes' parents that then came to life and talked. It was a very cool uh, effect. <laughs> Pero lo importante es que esta casa es parte de la historia de todo el continente. Aquí se instauró la tesorería real y aquí vivió Martín, Miguel y Buenos. Mi hijo. Mi hijo. Nuestro hijo. El segundo de nueve hijos. In amongst all the audiovisual things, there were also just regular signs with information. And some like other stuff like the the family crest here of the Guemes family. So it was good to see those mixed in as well. They had a little section here where the screens were like inside what looked like to be a large chest, talking about the, like, uh, Martin Miguel de Guemes's birth. It's pretty cool. Casa, 
this section was talking about Guemes when he was in the military in Buenos Aires when the British um, invaded. They had an animatronic Guemes writing a letter to his uh, to his family. And it's interesting because in this section he's talking about how his unit um, was actually able to raid a ship that was docked and take it over, um, which is pretty pretty amazing feat. More signs with information here, and also in between each of the exhibits, there were like these quotes from Guaymes on the walls, which was pretty cool to relate it back to him. Now, this next section was uh, an overall like history of the war for independence in Salta from from beginning to end, basically. Uh, this pro was probably the most impressive section for me, at least. El ejército libertador cruzaría los Andes, mientras las milicias del norte levantarían una infranqueable muralla defensiva. Para encabezar dicha campaña, el jefe militar salteño sería elegido. Desde entonces, Güemes reclutó y organizó aquel ejército de gauchos, a base de milicias que se movían con extrema rapidez, jinetes de gran defensa y aliados del paisaje. Estos paisanos, armados con tacuar, fusiles o herramientas de la Francia, darían su vida por defender esta tierra. A very complete and very good um, summary of the entire war, all the way up until Guaymes's eventual death towards the very end of the, uh, the independence war in Salta. <laughs> Some of the sections were a little more, um, I don't know, clunky. They had actors doing, um, you know, different uh, performances, and they weren't always the greatest, but it was still very, very cool to see. La patria es una palabra fácil de usar, pero difícil de defender. Yo tengo oído para los reclamos, los escucho, pero la causa revolucionaria está primero. And then out here in the courtyard, very impressive sculpture representing the gaucho army that Guemes had um, had formed. <laughs> Uh, a very, very cool sculpture here. And the sculptor of the work, Carlos Benavides. Then we finally got to the section that showed the uh, ambush and and eventual um, mortal wound that Guemes um, received. It's a very dramatic section. Um, and from there, we move on to Guemes uh, on his deathbed. Another very dramatic section and another situation where there's what seems like an oil painting that comes to life and it's actually actors um, acting out the whole scene of Guemes's dramatic final words uh, to the Spanish invaders. Dijera Bañeta, ofrece una mentira. 
su traslado a la ciudad para ser tratado por sus mejores médicos y recibir los cuidados y atención que vuestra edad tiene que se merece. Todo por la condición que no vuelva a empuñar sus armas contra España. Correr. ¿Es un gran que era la defensa de nuestro territorio? Correr. Poner sitio a salta. Y continuar la lucha hasta que no quede un solo invasor en nuestro suelo. And it's based on an actual oil painting, and here they showed off like a, a close-up of recreation of Guemes's face from that oil painting on his deathbed. And then outside that hall was the final passageway back towards the lobby. There was a timeline here of Guemes's entire history along with some, um, some artifacts. It's very cool to see all of the artifacts here on the timeline. Here in the very end of the of the hallway, there was uh, a screen that showed the uh, the building of the monument to Guemes that we saw at the beginning of the video. And also here, pictures of modern day gauchos contrasted with older photos of gauchos from the past. So as you can see, that, that museum was a very cool experience. Not at all what I was expecting. I was expecting a traditional museum, you know? It's uh, Wemes' childhood home. It's filled with, you know, stuff that he used to own and exhibits. And they had some of that stuff in there, but the whole audiovisual aspect to it was very, very cool. Some of those audiovisual presentations, the films were like better than others. Some of them were very, very cool. Some of them were kind of, uh, I don't know, a little like telenovela, um, but uh, I thought they were very cool, and as you can see from uh, where we are right now, if we head down this way, one block, we are back at the uh, Catedral de Salta, Basilica de Salta, right on uh, Plaza uh, Nueve de Julio, where we were in the very first video that we made here from Salta, and actually, in that cathedral is the final resting place of uh, Martin Miguel de Güemes. So let's go over there and see the final resting place and uh, we'll pay our respects to the man. And we'll talk a little bit about about his final, uh, his final days. So while Güemes was actually away, away from Salta, fighting down in Tucumán, the council formed of wealthy landowners who of course opposed him and were quite upset about him extorting them for money to fund his armies, they basically declared him to be deposed. They deposed him, and he, uh, when he came back, he peacefully entered the city and basically declared himself un... un he basically declared himself undeposed. Uh, it was basically a peaceful revolution and a peaceful counter-revolution, but that wasn't the end of it. Um, there was a, a force of 
the army organized by those rich landowning Salteños, and they came in to occupy the city by force. And during that battle, uh, Guemes was actually shot in the back, ambushed and shot in the back. You saw it in the uh, little film that they had at the museum back there. And he didn't die right away. He managed to make his way on horseback to a camp outside the city where his men were. And he lived there for like 10 more days uh, with the bullet still in him. And they were, the camp was besieged and surrounded by royalist forces. And the royalists sent two uh, representatives to like to negotiate and to ask, to offer basically that he could be taken to Buenos Aires and given medical care if he surrendered and declared that he would never uh, again, you know, raise arms against the Spanish. And he <laughs> refused and he made all his men around him swear an oath that they would never take an offer like that, and that they would fight uh, until their deaths against the Spanish. Very, very noble. And they all swore to him that they would do that the Royalists left, of course, and uh, he died on June 17, 1821. He was 36 years old. Within six months after his death, his gaucho militias had retaken the city of Salta, and it remained permanently in their hands. The Royalists uh, never retook it, and the armies loyal to the wealthy landowners never retook it either. Anyway, I think that's, uh, that'll conclude the story, the grand story of Martin Miguel de Guemes. Man, what a story, right? You know, I do a lot of, uh, I do a lot of research about history of the different places I'm going. I want to learn about, like, important people. If I see a statue or something, a big monument, I want to know, like, who is this guy? Why is there a giant monument of him? And, uh, that monument, you know, we saw at the beginning of the video, very, very impressive, right? And when they make a monument that big and that impressive to you, uh, you obviously did something pretty cool. And uh, yeah, this guy, the more I learned about him, the more I realized uh, he's a real badass, uh, Martin Miguel de Güemes. So I think that's going to be it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll say goodbye to you from here, the beautiful uh, Plaza Nueve de Julio once again. But stick around, there's going to be plenty more. Play more content coming from here in Salta, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.